London, England, 2013. For six years, the UK Ministry of Defense has been in the slow process of releasing the entirety of their UFO files to the National Archives of England. Now, the final batch of declassified reports are released to the public. Despite ministry claims that no credible evidence or alien craft was discovered in over 50 years of study, one report from January 14, 2009, includes a fascinating photo of a disc-shaped craft hovering above the world's most famous megalithic site, Stonehenge. Stonehenge has been the site of a number of UFO encounters over the years. The county of Wiltshire itself is something of a UFO hotspot, dating back over the lifetime of the Ministry of Defense's UFO project, there have probably been several hundred, if not low thousands of sightings recorded in the county of Wiltshire. Could the unique construction of Stonehenge play a role in the unexplained phenomena witnessed around the site? Perhaps clues can be found by examining the mysterious engineering of the megalithic structure and the remarkable size and power of the ancient stone circles. The British Isles, 55 BC. Julius Caesar begins a military campaign to extend the Roman Empire into Britain. His forces are met by ferocious resistance from the native Celtic tribes, led by their druid priests. The tribes of Britain were all united against the warring Romans by the Druids to repel the greatest general who's ever lived. It would take the Romans nearly a century to conquer Britain. Once they succeeded, they turned Stonehenge into a temple of their sun god, Apollo. But the Romans were not the first to adopt this monument as their own. The Celts themselves had migrated into Britain some 2,500 years before. When they arrived, Stonehenge was already there, but the country was eerily deserted. The people who are responsible for Stonehenge, for erecting it, are nowhere to be seen. And this is a puzzling uh, piece of information that we know now. Archaeologists today believe that this great Neolithic stone circle has stood on the plains of Wiltshire, England for no less than 5,000 years. An outer ring of 30 four-ton stones surrounds five huge arches whose massive blocks weigh 22 tons each and which were somehow transported from 120 miles away. It's an astonishing feat of ancient engineering, and the mysteries about its construction still remain. Some of the stones at Stonehenge weigh between 50 and 70 tons. Some of the stones are even heavier. So how could you have moved these into place? How could you have moved them from Wales, where the blue stones, the spotted dolerite, came from within Stonehenge? The blue stones from which the original Stonehenge was constructed were transported from 120 miles to the west from a place called the Priscelli Mountains, which is the only place in the British Isles where you can get that kind of stone. Now, how they were moved is a mystery. The predominant theory as to how the megalithic blocks were moved is that the builders fashioned sledges and rollers out of tree trunks to lug the blue stones from the Presley Hills, then transferred them onto rafts and floated them first along the Welsh coast and then up the River Avon towards Salisbury Plain. You know, this idea that all these ancient blocks were moved with uh, wooden rollers is, is very interesting. However, do you know what happens to wood when you put 20 tons on a wooden roller, it'll just get crushed to smithereens. However they did it, it must have been very important for them to move these particular stones to Stonehenge. And that's a mystery. That doesn't happen anywhere else at stone circles in the country. They only come from stone that's quarried locally. 
However Stonehenge was constructed, it involved moving much more than just the stone blocks that stand today. According to researchers, this is just 25% of the original monument, the center of a much larger structure that was surrounded by multiple concentric circles, constructed over a period of more than a thousand years. So Stonehenge is very interesting in that it evolves over a very long period of time and the first thing that goes up at Stonehenge is not there anymore. It's the 56 holes that today are known as the Aubrey Circle that used to be filled with the blue stones from Priscelli. Around the outside of the stone circle is constructed a ditch and embankment. This is the so-called Henge structure that stands around Stonehenge from where it gets its name. Many mainstream scholars suggest that Stonehenge was simply a place of worship and a burial ground. But why would the ancient people of Britain have spent more than a thousand years to build what amounts to a church and a cemetery? And the big problem is we don't really know who these people were. We don't really know where they come from. So we find similar structures around the world that show incredible levels of sophistication, like the pyramids of Giza in Egypt, like Machu Picchu in Peru. So why not in ancient Britain? Why not have a very advanced civilization here? The fact that we now know that Stonehenge was part of a much larger superstructure indicates to me that we've only barely scratched the surface. What did it all mean?